The magnificence of the Ambersons began in 1873. Their splendor lasted throughout all the years that saw their Midland town spread and darken into a city. In that town in those days, all the women who wore silk or velvet knew all the other women who wore silk or velvet. And everybody knew everybody else's family horse and carriage. The only public conveyance was the streetcar. A lady could whistle to it from an upstairs window, and the car would halt at once and wait for her. While she shut the window, put on her hat and coat, went downstairs, found an umbrella, told the girl what to have for dinner, and came forth from the house. Too slow for us nowadays, because the faster we're carried, the less time we have to spare. During the earlier years of this period, while bangs and bustles were having their way with women, there were seen men of all ages to whom a hat meant only that rigid, tall, silk thing known to impudence as a stovepipe. But the long contagion of the derby had arrived. One season, the crown of this hat would be a bucket. Next, it would be a spoon. Every house still kept its boot jack, but high-top boots gave way to shoes and Congress gaiters, and these were played through fashions that shaped them now with toes like box ends and now with toes like the prows of racing shells. Trousers with a crease were considered plebeian. The crease proved that the garment had lain upon a shelf and hence was ready-made. With evening dress, a gentleman wore a tan overcoat, so short that his black coattails hung visible five inches below the overcoat. But after a season or two, he lengthened his overcoat till it touched his heels. And he passed out of his tight trousers into trousers like great bags. But in those days, they had time for everything. Time for sleigh rides and balls and assemblies and cotillions and open house on New Year's and all day picnics in the woods. And even that prettiest of all vanished customs, the serenade of a summer night Young men would bring an orchestra under a pretty girl's window, and flute, harp, fiddle, cello, cornet, and bass viol would presently release their melodies to the dulcet stars. <laughs> Against so homespun a background, the magnificence of the Ambersons was as conspicuous as a brass band at a funeral. There it is! 